That's because the Spiritual Life Coaching Certification, based on the proven formula Rewire Your Brain for Success, is an innovative program designed to equip you with the knowledge and skills to support you in your journey of becoming an Elite League Coach. Inquire today by visiting coachingacademy.net. Join the new earth on the Cornelia Stephanie show. Tune in each month as Cornelia takes listeners on an odyssey of higher consciousness to inspire, educate, and empower. Cornelia Stephanie is a spiritual teacher, passionate speaker, published author, and founder of the Empower Network. Cornelia guides people on the path of self-healing, peace, and liberation. For more information, go to CorneliaStephanie.com. Here's a quick tip from Jason and Patricia at the Ecosystem Approach Show. We're going to help caregivers connect with someone who has no ability to communicate or anyone who struggles with communication. This is for caregivers who are responsible for young children, seniors, or anyone without language. Try talking to their soul or essence directly. We do it all the time. Get in a comfortable spot, relax, and close your eyes. Then just talk to them. Feel free to listen for a response. It's that simple. If you want to hear our show about the topic, go to our website, theecosystemapproach.org, and under the radio tab, search for The Story of My Mom. Listen to our show every week. We teach you how to apply energy techniques to everyday life in ways that is practical and useful. See you Monday at 1 p.m. Pacific or find us at theecosystemapproach.org. Patricia McNair, host of Divine Guidance with Patricia, and I'm here to help you live a more authentic, spiritually connected life. Join me every first and third Wednesday at 9 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Being who you are in everyday life is the key to unlocking soul wisdom within that our whole self already knows. Get ready to embrace your spiritual, mental, and emotional There are shows with psychics. And there are shows with doctors. But there's no show like the psychic and the doc. Your practical paranormal power unleashed. This show synthesizes the talents of world-class medium Mark Anthony, the psychic lawyer, psychic explorer, and street smart spiritualist, behavioral psychologist, Dr. Pat Vasily. All subjects are on the table and no topic is taboo. Inspiration, insight, action, and fun as Mark Anthony connects callers with loved ones in spirit in tandem with Dr. Pat's fresh, no-nonsense, street-smart, intuitive insights. And she is hilarious. Extraordinary problems require extraordinary solutions, which may come from this side or the other side. This is The Psychic and The Doc, and And it starts now. Oh, this is going to be a great show tonight, everyone. I am Mark Anthony, The Psychic, and I am here with my incredible co-host, The Doc, who is Dr. Pat Basili, world-renowned behavioral psychologist. And this is a very fascinating show because this is your lucky 13. And plus we have a fascinating astrological event coming up this weekend that Dr. Pat's going to talk about. And for centuries, people have looked at Friday the 13th as a macabre and frightening day. And people feel that the forces of darkness are afoot. Oh, Dr. Pat, I think this is, this is right up our alley to talk. Oh, about. Come on. Listen, one of the, scariest i think almost the scariest i'm saying not as scary as halloween okay we'll talk about halloween when we get there but i will tell you uh the top three scariest movies right it, if i were to pick my top three where because look i'm a movie goer i don't walk out of movies there's only a handful of movies i've ever walked out of but when you think of scary movies that come up to the top, of course, Halloween, but we're not going to talk about that. Then an all-time favorite, Nightmare on Elm Street. Okay. However, does Jason ever die in the Friday the 13th movies? I don't know. 
but oh my goodness, what we have done to stigmatize and scare people about Friday the 13th, which is not very scary. I don't know, Mark. What do you think? I, I think that, um, well, I think people like to be afraid. You know, people say, oh, I'm afraid. And, and there's a difference between the type of afraid that comes up with Halloween and the type of afraid that comes, you know, from going to see a spooky movie or going on a roller coaster than, than it is like the type of afraid that um, we're seeing in Israel right now from these uh. attacks from Hamas. I mean, um, I know everyone at Transformation Network, our hearts and, and minds and sympathy go out to all the people of Israel and for all the, the innocent Palestinian people who are being caught in the crossfire um, you know, please accept uh, our 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 thoughts, our prayers, and our hopes for for peace. But uh, to to answer your question, people like to be afraid. But then again, there's fear and there's phobia. And the phobia of Friday the Thirteenth it's got two names: Parascivi decatriphobia, and the more commonly Frigatrisca decaphobia. And it's like that's a mouthful, which uh, one's Greek, one's Latin, and they both literally mean fear of Friday the 13th. And I know in your work as a psychologist, Dr. Pat, you've done a lot with people having fears and phobias. Um, and according to the uh, National Phobia Institute, which is in uh, North Carolina, uh, 21 million Americans have a profound fear of Friday the 13th which prevents them from leaving their homes. They don't go to school, they don't go to work, people travel less. And it is estimated that every Friday the 13th, businesses in the United States lose a billion dollars in revenue simply because people are afraid. And Rocky was telling me earlier today, she was at the hair salon and there was a bunch of ladies there saying, I had to get my hair done today because tomorrow's dun, 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 Friday the 13th. Well, look at it, though. I mean, we have taken something that's, oh, my God, Friday the 13th, a little bad luck, da, 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 like that. We have turned into, we have turned it into, now, I wasn't, I wasn't around 100 years ago. I don't know what people did about Friday the 13th, but we have really turned this into a classic. Yes. Frightening. Yes. Yes, we have. Uh, and that's going to be coupled by an amazing October 14th. So I want to put these two together, 13th and 14th. Now by themselves, so what? But when you put Friday the 13th with one of the most incredible solar eclipses from an astrological point of view, but the energetics of this eclipse has already been felt. How many people have you know started to talk about breaking up with people? Breaking up yeah. with your family, breaking up with your network. I mean, I have had that happen to me this week several times, but it is a powerful eclipse. We move into the Aries Libra eclipse cycle, which will last until 2025. What? What? So you better start to think about this being called, get it Friday the 13th, but you know what this is called? The ring of fire. When you put the ring of fire and Friday the 13th together, back to back, 48 hours, Friday the 13th, ring of fire together. Think about what fire does. Fire transmutes things. This is the time to burn away what no longer serves well, you. Well, and, and what Dr. Pat's talking about is metaphorical. That doesn't yeah, mean no, 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 burn no. your house no, down no, no. with your soon-to-be ex in it. <laughs> no, no. So. However, Jessica and I were talking about this today. Both of us uh, studied in some of the indigenous traditions. And one of them, Jessica, pointed out to me was that there's a tradition to literally take something on the 14th, take a bunch of things and break them. And scream and shout and break them. But that is the truth about this eclipse. You see, and Friday the 13th represents fear. Now, couple that with getting rid of your fears on the 14th. Man, you got like the Muhammad Ali one-two punch. Yeah. And, you know, there's a lot to Friday the 13th. Um, a lot of, um, in, in uh, the Nordic culture, Nordic mythology, and in early Christian uh, beliefs in the... Um, 
the later Roman Empire and the Dark Ages, it was believed that if 13 people sat at a table, that within a year, one of them would die. And um, some of uh, that comes from the belief that at the Last Supper, there was uh, Jesus plus 12 apostles, and Judas was the 13th. And the Nordic gods, there was 13 gods that sat at a table, and then Baldur, the god of light, was struck down. Then there, um, th Friday the 13th appears in the Canterbury Tales as being a, a cursed day. And, you know, you can pass it off as mythology and superstition. But then have you ever wondered why most cities don't have a 13th street? Why most hotels don't have a yeah. 13th floor? And then again, there's Apollo 13. Of all the moon missions of NASA, the one that failed was Apollo 13. And um, I'm going to be on Coast to Coast AM tomorrow night. And um, uh, host Ian Punnett is uh, standing in for George Norrie. And I really like Ian. He's a great host. And I'm going to be going into the history, the mystery, and the basis for why Friday the 13th is a, considered by many people a cursed day. And but we're not going to get so much into that because, you know, this is that time of year where we talk about the spooks and the haunts and, and all that, because Halloween's coming up and Halloween's on the 31st, which is the reverse of oh my 13. Gosh. I know. So so oh, this is. A, 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 yeah, th oh, this you can't plan like, this. No, People, you, can't. you can't plan something like that. Right, Mark. <laughs> um, and look. Couple that. Now, I love you did the bookends. I love that you did that because there's a bookend to the solar eclipse and the bookend to the solar eclipse later on this month, the lunar eclipse. So look at the bookends in October. And, you know, these signs are in Libra, but Aries is playing a very strong side. You know, this is emotionally spiritual. This is shifting. Look at what you just mentioned at the top of the hour. Our hearts go out. You know, people that lose their lives in what seems to be a way that could have been done differently, let's say. And you and I did the show uh, when we talked about the attack, uh, interviewing the parliament members. In, in Ukraine, yeah. In, the, in yeah. Ukraine, and we had that show. And so this is a time internally for all of us to look at what this energy means to us. And when we look at it, and today's show, we're going to tap on both. We're going to tap on the good, the bad, the ugly, but mostly the good, because it is going to be the luckiest of times for those of us that do things. But also we have a sensitivity to the emotional upheaval of all the people that call into the show. It's an extremely important time. You know, I was shocked today. We had an attorney meeting without going into details. We've been doing some litigation over here in Jersey and we brought on a new attorney. And it's been very difficult to get our team to show any empathy for a horrific situation. But this guy today, he got it. And when people get you at that level, they will fight for you. That's what I want to say. This is a time where you need to surround yourself with people that know you and will fight for you. I'm not talking about fight, fight, fight. I'm talking about emotional support. I'm talking about watching you go through your spiritual growth. Because part of Friday the 13th is really facing your fears, right, Mark? Oh, yes, it is. And fear, there's a difference between a fear and a phobia. Um, and, and I think you're better, better qualified to, to describe what that is, because we all have fears. We all have a rational fear of something. In other words, if you see a rattlesnake and you're afraid to go and pick it up with your bare hand, that is a rational fear. So, Dr. Pat, how does a fear differ from a phobia? Um, we could do a whole show on that, but I want to tell you really what I like to focus on. Phobias that people have are, are so deeply embedded. You know, they're showstoppers. 
they're showstoppers. Linda, my best friend, my best friend, she's not here. I can talk about her. She went to walk the dog. But my best friend, Linda, cannot even look at an injection or a needle. You know, like you go to get a flu shot or a back, whatever you got, like that. Yeah. Like any, like, can't do it. Uh, she went to the eye doctor with me. The eye doctor walked out of the room to go get something. And Linda was cold on the floor, passed out. Wow. And we, it, so that is something that is such a reaction to you. You cannot control it. You cannot push through it. Um, and that is so painful. Fear has a lot of different faces. There's real fear, like the rhino you got on the wall back there. Okay. <laughs> You got that on the wall. See, if I was face to face, you need to be afraid and run. Yeah. <laughs> but fear has many layers. You know, fear has the notion of real harm and harm that you think is real, but may not be. And they're different. There's a fine line between when you cross, cross over from fear to phobia, though. And there's not enough time on the show. But I want to say this is an important show for everybody calling in. We're going to take a very short break. And when we come back, we're going to go right to the phones. This is a live call in show. Uh, we're going to make sure that you get the kind of support you need, whether it's fear, phobia, Friday the 13th, or an eclipse that you know very little about. But for this week alone, you probably broke up with a few people. <laughs> Let's take a <laughs> short. <laughs> I believe me. Let's take a short break, everybody. When we come back, we're going to get right to the phones. Thank you. Everybody, welcome back. Uh, just as I was talking about Linda, she walks back in the door. There you go. Um, welcome back to the psychic and the doc. And as we said before, we're going to go right to the phones and see how many of you we can bring on here and do some magic. Emily, who do we have first? First off, we have Caroline from Arizona. Caroline, you are live. Welcome to the psychic and the doc. Oh, I'm getting, I'm getting on the phone call. Hold on. Allison or Caroline, Caroline from Arizona? Yeah, are you there? Hi, this Caroline. Is Caroline. Hey, how Hi. are you? Welcome to the show. Thank you. How can we help you tonight? Um, so I wanted just to see if Mark had any messages from any loved ones. Ah, let um, me kick you over to Mark. Thanks, Dr. Pat. Hi, Caroline, and thank you for calling in. Um, Caroline, as soon as I heard your voice, I kept getting the um, I'm, I'm I'm getting the presence of a male spirit that feels like he's on the father level. Now that doesn't always mean a father; it could be an uncle or a mentor or an older male um, that that you looked up to. And uh, this gentleman could even be a grandfather because this guy he was older when he passed, but um, I'm getting like he was sort of graying at the temples, but he still had. Um, like uh, uh, like salt and peppery type hair, uh, colored hair, and I'm getting um, a very gaunt look to his face. Like um, he was very thin prior to passing, and this indicates like a draining sensation, which which is an indicator that his passing was not a quick event. He was very ill. It took him time to to um, to transition. My feet and legs are icy cold, indicating one of two things or both things. Difficulty walking prior to passing, but that's also a circulation problem. And now I'm getting the cold and numbness in my fingers as well. So this gentleman was having circulation issues, most likely peripheral neuropathy. Um, poor guy. He, he, I don't think he could even hold down any solid food prior to passing. Also getting a lot of uh, lower GI tract uh, colon issues. Um, and, you know, he really handled this as as good as as better than anybody else could um he was a real trooper um uh, put up with it fought it and then finally his body had enough and he just let go do you recognize this person um carolyn um it possibly could be a couple of people okay yeah, hold I mean, on i think it, it's one of two people okay um, is there somebody connected to you or to him? This doesn't necessarily have to be his name, but it could be somebody close to the two of you, like an Ed or an Eddie, it could be a Ted, but I'm hearing like an Ed, an Edward, or an Eddie. 
Eddie could be Freddie. Because see, when I when I hear things vibrationally, I'm getting like Eddie, but Eddie could be Teddy, could be Freddie, or it could be Ed or Edward. Is there anyone connected to you or to him with that that type of name? I'm not sure at this time. All right. Do you know any Eds or Eddies in this world? Okay, don't worry about that. Now, um, I don't think so. I mean, I can't think of anybody. That's okay. You know, it's always tough when you're on the spot. And, you know, when you get off the phone, you'd be like, oh, yeah, that guy. All right. Um, month of May, month of May, month of May, because now he's projecting to me an emerald, which could mean a piece of jewelry you may recognize of significance with an emerald in it. Uh, emerald is the birthstone for the month of May. So this could indicate a significant birth, death, anniversary, or event connected to you in any way or to him or someone close to either of you within the month of May. And he could also be referencing a woman connected to you or him with a variation on the name Mary, like Mary, Marie, Margaret, Marilyn, um, anything there makes sense. I can't think of anything at this time. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Um, it will later on because I know when I'm getting good stuff, you said this could be one or two people. Who are the one or two people that you think this could be? I think it could either be my husband's grandpa, Floyd, who passed away. Um, I think it's been two years now. Or my grandpa, who passed away. It's been a while. I think this is your grandpa. Was he uh, your mother's dad? Um, my Her stepdad. That's a yes. Okay. Um, hold on. He's going back to the month of May. All right, look, I don't mean to, to 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 focus on this. I want you to think of the month of May. Don't worry about how it applies to him. What does May mean to you? Or is there any jewelry with an emerald in it of significance that you may recognize? Not that I can think of at this time. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and pass, okay, because there's too much of a block here. But what he's telling you is that, um, and he's being he's being very kind about this. He says you tend to overthink, you overexpect, and the problem is you are missing opportunities because you're hyper focusing on minutia instead of looking at the big picture. So what his message for you is: you've got to stop being so focused on the little things and begin to look at the big picture. And with that, I'll let you go. Yeah. Uh, let me ask you a question. You. Uh, I don't want you to focus on May yeah. so much. I want you to focus on spring. What happened in the spring for you? Something happened this spring. This spring? Um, I, I, I cannot think right now. I'm sure I'll think of it as soon as we... I have time to like think about okay. it. Okay. All right. But so I, we're going to, we're going to let you go because we don't want to really encourage you to conjure up something. A lot of times these things okay. take time to think about them. Uh, yeah. Let, let's let you go. Okay. And look, it'd be great to hear back when these things start to pop right in. <laughs> Thank you so much for calling in. Thank you. Um, Emily, who do we have next? Next we have Gina from Florida. Thank you. Hi, Gina. Welcome you. Welcome to the show. Oops, sorry, give Gina one second here. <laughs> Gina. It's not Do we have Gina's Gina? fault. It's my slow computer. One second. How did Gina? Well, oh, we're waiting for Gina. I want looks to like to you. looks like Friday the thirteenth is working. Oh, it's on well, us. you know, let, while we're waiting for Gina and Emily, will just interrupt us when she gets Gina. Um, this is a different eclipse, and I want to just tell you why. The one we had in April of 2023 pushed us out of our comfort zone, and I can think of one thing in particular I did in April that re I was so out of my comfort zone. This encourage us to embrace transformation and it it does that and emerge from the ash, ashes like it's a very different eclipse i mean when you're talking about this you're talking about venus and virgo getting together oh my gosh and mm -hmm. so we're really in this phase now where lilith is going to jump in it's all about opportunities to break free from 
expect, especially the expectations others have of you. You know what I'm saying? And yes. we have been under the microscope with that. There are a lot of us coming out of the pandemic and we have had these expectations imposed on ourselves. I hear more stories about expectations from bosses at work over the I mean it's crazy but this is the time for this new new moon you have to recognize your self-worth and assert your desires and I'm telling you you better get ready to do it Emily who do we okay Gina from Florida are you there Gina I am hey Gina, let me hear it let me hear your sound for a little bit I want to make sure we can pick you up clearly how are you, Gina? I'm good. How are you? Good. I think we can hear you pretty clear. What can we do for you tonight? Are you on a speakerphone? Um, I am uh, on a speakerphone, yes. Should yeah, I try to yeah, yeah, get, get off it. Yeah, off yeah get off please. it. Yeah. Yeah. What what happens with the speakerphone vibrationally? Speakerphones are vibrational energies, and they just mess up the connection. Okay. Okay, how can we help you tonight? Is this better? Hi. Oh yeah. Thank you. I am just calling calling in to see if um you know any anybody is, is coming through. Okay. Okay, hold on. Um, let me do something a little bit different here, Gina. Do not give me the name. What's the relationship of the person that you want to uh, hear from the most? Um, my mother. Okay, hold on. Um, all right, there's a female stepping through. Now, this may not be your mother. This could be somebody else, but I'm getting a lot of pain in my mouth, my teeth, my gums, also my esophagus and throat. So something was going on with her prior to passing with her mouth and her throat. This could be an illness, but this could also be, she could possibly have been on a ventilator or, or something else because I'm getting a lot of pain. Like I said, mouth, teeth, gums, um, throat, um, and also feel very nauseated. Now, the nausea, Gina, indicates to me that she was having difficulty eating and or holding down food prior to passing. Sometimes nausea is a cancer indicator. It doesn't always mean cancer, but it could. Does anything there make sense to your mom or to somebody else close to you? That would all uh, make sense for my mother. It, okay. Yeah. All right. Um, I, I'm I'm smiling here and I don't mean to laugh, but I'm hearing she's giving me or triggering a memory in my head. I'm hearing, I've been working on the railroad all the live long day. All right. Now, I know that's goofy, but spirits are these memories in my head. Now, what this case is somebody who liked trains or traveled by trains. It could be you, it could be her, somebody else. It could also mean, hey, we always put all the trains that are on the Christmas tree, but this could sound real strange. This could also be something about St. Louis, like um, Missouri, St. Louis, or somebody with a name like Louis or Louise. Is there any of that makes sense to you in any way? Um, she went to college in St. Louis, and we're in bingo. Area. <laughs> yeah, bingo. Um, it would take too long for me to explain how, if you knew what was going on in my head, you'd be like, oh my God. Okay, so... <laughs> So um, she wants you to know that, that uh, she physically let go. Um, it's not that she gave up. She said, you know, she just she her body just just let go. OK, it she was, was her time to pass. And she said that um, it's funny. She keeps saying supermarket, supermarket, supermarket. Here's my question. Were you running a lot of errands for her, doing a lot of things for her prior to passing? Um, I have uh, a fond memory of her and I in a supermarket uh, uh, prior to her passing, and I, you know, I tell tell that story often. So she may be. Clients were that. as quick on the uptake as you are because you're a perfect example of of how spirit communication uh, of of how a recipient of spirit communication should be. You see, your interpretation of something's more important than mine. I'm hearing supermarket, so I'm thinking, okay. 
um, I guess, you know, you were running a lot of errands, but you see you immediately that evoke a memory, a positive memory between you and your mom involving a supermarket and a song. Okay. So she's totally cool about yeah. that. Okay. Here she goes again. Now she's showing me and I'm laughing here. Little Red Riding Hood and the Big Bad Wolf. Okay. There's got to be something here. Who's afraid of the Big Bad Wolf? Da, 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 da. But I'm getting Little Red Riding Hood. And could there also be somebody with a name like Ginny or Virginia? And I know, you know you're, you're a Gina, but um, go ahead. Uh, I I have uh, a best friend named Virginia that goes by the name Ginny. She's <laughs> alive and well. Okay. Yeah, that means your mom's around and aware of what's going on in your life. And now your mom's talking about your fingernails. Did you just do like a, did something different with your nails, like a new color or style or something? She's showing your fingernails. I, You're laughing. I, okay, I, what's going on? I have I, I have not gotten my nails done in over 10 years. And yesterday I just had tips put on. And oh, there yeah. we go. I love it. <laughs> you see, wow. now, now, yeah, so... So your mom is around you and aware of what's happening in your life. And she is thrilled that you are doing some stuff for yourself. Um, uh, you know, it goes oh, without saying you, your mom loves you so much. I mean, she loved you in this world. She loves you from the other side. And she said, um, oh, God, she likes the songs. Right, now I'm hearing. Thank you for being a friend. Remember that? Um, what was that show? Golden Girls. Um, you were not just her daughter. You were her best bud. You were her best friend. And I'm hearing, thank you for being a friend. You know how that, that song goes. She is Aww. just yeah. so thrilled. Yeah. So we thrilled that you're. And you watched a lot of Golden Girls. And you watched Golden a lot Girls. of Golden Girls. Oh, I love it. Yeah. She said, neither yeah. one of us were Rose. She said, hold on. She said, neither one of us were Rose. Okay. Um, that's funny. So oh, I think what she means is that both of you are really sharp and quick um, on the uptake, which is you know, clear from the way you're connecting all the dots here. Let me get a message for, from her for you. Um, never be afraid to take a leap and try something new. She said, but make sure it's a calculated risk because you don't leap off a cliff. That's her message. All right, Dr. Pat. Yeah. Uh, hey, this is like outstanding. That. I love it. I love it. Hey, I got a question for you. Um, how are you doing with your friend, Virginia? I'm sorry. What, can you say that again? Yes. How are you and your friend, Virginia, doing? Um, I need to reach out to her. That's um, right. You do. When was the last time you talked to her? When was the last time you talked to her? Um. I called her about two weeks ago uh, with no answer. And, um, you know, I have been, I've been a little, uh, you know, I, I need to reach out to her. Yeah. See, I take these I messages. I don't know if is the right word. But... No, it's good because I hear the messages and I have a, I have an additive uh, interpretation. Uh, when Mark does this and you get something about a Virginia that isn't you or isn't about the grocery store, there is something else there for you to do. I don't know what it is, but I will tell you okay. that nine times out of 10, there are no mistakes. Um, and the fact that Mark is singing a song about a friend, it's your friend, Virginia. And I don't know that there's anything yeah. wrong. I think you have a better insight than that, but I would, I would, do my best to try to get a hold of your friend, Virginia. Okay. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. Okay. I, I love watching your shows and all of it. Thank you. Oh, and Mark, thank you. Mark sings so much better than I do. Thank goodness I don't start singing. <laughs> I'd lose everybody. I'm thank I'm you so much. Right now. I love that. Thank you. Okay. Right, I got to go get my nails done. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, Emily, let's keep rolling, okay? Okay, next we are going to go to Marie from Florida. And let me grab her real quick. My computer is very slow today. Well, I'm telling you, you got the eclipse going on on Friday the 13th. <laughs> yeah. I'm surprised the computer is up at all. Yeah, so it's not my fault. It's Friday the 13th. <laughs> I had to reboot. I had to reboot. I had to reboot three times today. Okay, here we go. We got it working. We have okay. Marie from Florida. Hey, Marie, welcome to the show. Psychic in the dark. That's who we are. Thank you. 
Hi, are you on a speakerphone or are you like uh, a regular phone? I'm not on a, I'm not on a speakerphone. I'm in on an old fashioned cordless phone. I, so what I'm going to tell you to do on the cordless phone, you come through loud and clear. Please don't move around a lot because you know those cordless phones, right? I worked for the telephone company for 25 years, so I know the cordless phones. So what I want you to do is speak up and loud and clear and don't move around a lot because that cordless, that will get all of the frequencies and jumble it up. How can we help you today? I have a question about my employment. Okay. You want to give me a little bit more information on that? <laughs> yeah, oh, with, sure. with questions, you got to be more specific because people will tell me tell me something about what's going to happen to me and your spirits may say you're going to drink a glass of water sometime in the next year and i'm not being facetious <laughs> you know but you got to realize you know it's like tell you know, tell me about my employment yeah. well yeah uh, yeah i mean and i think dr pat and i already get the you know to look I, i'm a lawyer i've been around the block dr pat you know, yeah. it's like usually when people are asking about their employment, it's like number one, they're up for uh, uh, a promotion. Number two, they have their job. Or have a job. We don't, don't want to disclose yeah. anything you don't want to. I just, right, just right. like a little more information if you can. Yes, I can. I want a new job. I'm not sure if I should focus on in person jobs or remote position jobs. Okay, I'm going to give you the first answer. Then I'm going to turn you over to Mark. We're going to switch this up a little bit. Yeah. Um, if you heard me talk about the eclipse, it's right exactly about what you just shared. This is a time of change and transformation. It's also a time to take a leap of faith. And I'm not telling you to do anything bizarre, but you seem to have choices. Is that correct? You have a couple of choices, right? Yes. OK, but you're afraid to take the choice that you want. Am I correct? I, look, I'm not a psychic. I'm just I've been around the blog a few times, but you're afraid to really take the one you want. Is that correct? I have trouble deciding between vanilla and chocolate ice cream. I'm not sure what I really want. Right. I love this. And that's when you choose strawberry. Um, and what I mean, by, that's what I'm trying to say. I love that you brought that analogy up because a lot of times chocolate vanilla, but wait a minute, there's more options. So I'm not going to get, I'm not going to guess that you're a Virgo, but I really want to say that I'm going to turn you over to Mark in a minute. He's going to help you. And then you can come back to me. There are, there are several choices you have on the table for you. But it's not that you're afraid to choose. You're afraid to make a mistake. Do you understand the difference? Yes. Yes. Now, with ice cream, you're talking to me. There ain't no mistake. The only ice cream you don't want to put in front of me is anything with caramel. I don't even understand why you put caramel in ice cream. That's not even ice cream. If you put caramel in ice cream, I don't even understand that. What is caramel? It's like a hard thing. So what I'm trying to say to you is I'm gonna, you're going to come back to me in a minute. But this is less about vanilla and chocolate and strawberry, and you are afraid to make the wrong choice. Now, let me let me just get you connected with Mark. OK, Mark? Certainly. Um, what I'm getting is that you need to what you said about uh, remote or in person, in person, in person, in person, in person. You working remote or in a cubicle doesn't work. You've got to have human interaction, not just with coworkers, but potentially with customers or whatever field that you're in. Because with you, I get this whole um, like uh, customer service, um, human resources. So you need that interpersonal uh, contact. Um, does that make sense to you? Yes. Okay. Question. I'm getting a male energy coming through connected to you in some way, and he did die by his own hand. He was a younger male, could have been late teens, early 20s. I'm getting um, this clamping around my neck. Um, now, that could be some type of, of asphyxiation, could have been hanging, could have been some type of drug overdose that threw him into a, a, a pulmonary, a cardiopulmonary failure. Um, do you recognize this person? I do not. 
You do not? I do not. <laughs> okay. This may be, I know we have other callers. There may be uh, somebody calling in. This may be somebody connected to him. Um, yeah, you do. This is somebody you knew in high school. This is somebody you knew in high school. Um, I'm just going to leave it at that. I want you to think about yeah. this. Uh, but hold on. Let's get a message from him. He said, you had the ability to just talk to people go up and and strike up a conversation with anyone and he said you actually were nice to him you would talk to him or the few people that acknowledged his existence he said but he always kind of like hit a fringe coward in the back um he just did not have those he had like social anxiety so you need to think about this because you probably don't even really remember this person, but you were still nice mm -hmm. to him. You gave him the time of day when so many others didn't. The reason he's coming through is for the very reason um, of you needing to what your gift is this interpersonal skills, interpersonal relations. That's where you need. That's the type of job, whatever field it's in. You got to work with people. You're not a cubicle person. I mean, there's people that are and that's great, but you're not one of those. So that's the message. I want you yeah. to think about who he is because yeah. um, it's going to make sense to you at some point. Yeah, I, I want to just say, uh, I'll let you go in a second. This may be a person, and this is following up with Mark said, you may not know this person ended life by his own hand. You may not know that. Uh, sometimes we get that information that comes through, which has more information that Mark brings than the people actually know about. But this is a connection you want to think about because I have a feeling you want to pick the safe decision on the job. And I don't think that that's going to make you happy, right? You're not going to make a mistake. It doesn't matter which, which decision you make, you will not make a mistake. But we're encouraging you to make a, to make a choice where you'll be happy. Do you see what I'm saying? happy yes happy i um i have gray hair and i'm wondering if i should have to dye it to get a new job you know what this we could do a whole show on do you want to i'm going to just get right do you do you see the color of my hair do you see the color of my hair or you, probably i don't think you're watching the show uh, I, I'm sorry. I tried to get it on my that's okay. cell phone and I could not. My, my hair is blonde. I am not blonde. I love I love my blonde hair. I am not blonde. What do you want to do with your hair? Just tell me what you want to do. Do you want to go blonde? What do you want to do? You want to leave it the way it is? Because, you know, you're perfect the way you are. What would you like to do? Not what you think you I have to do to get a job. Leave it. Then leave it. You do not want to take a job where other people's expect. This is what this this eclipse is all about. It's about letting go of other people's expectations about you. You don't want to color your hair. Don't. You will get the job with people that will appreciate you regardless of the color of your hair. You see what I'm saying? Good. Don't let the color of your hair yeah. stop you from taking a job where you be in public. Because I think that's what's coming down to the bottom of this right here, right now. I think I'm getting a sense of it. And I think that's the message that Mark gave you that came through. It doesn't matter the color of your hair. You're the kind of person that this gentleman is trying to get you a message that you are that person that is out there supportive to be with people. And I think when somebody like that comes through, he's like, hell with the color of your hair. I Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Yes, I see. Yeah, yeah. Because I get as much criticism for dyeing my hair blonde as I do for having my hair natural color with that beautiful every once in a while sil silver streak that comes through just like my dad. And you know what? What other people think of you is really their business. What you think of you is all that matters, okay? I want to take that with you now, okay? Okay, thank you. 
Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I can't wait to hear what you do. Hey, everybody, uh, we're going to keep rolling. But before we do, Mark, you got to tell people how they're going to listen to the show, all of the stuff about you. How did they get a color your, a copy of your book uh, and color book? So are you going to do a coloring book? Because like that just came through for me. Coloring uh, how, do we, book. how do we find out about you? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, afterlifefrequency.com, just like uh, my latest book, the afterlifefrequency.com. And um, this month, um, I'm all, I also write for Best Holistic Life magazine, and you can find out how to uh, subscribe to that on my, my um, website as well and sign up for a reading. And tomorrow night, I'll be on Coast to Coast AM, which is the world's largest paranormally themed show. Um, George Norrie is on tour, so uh, host Ian Punnett, and I've been on with Ian before. We did a great show, I think, back in June, and they're having me back on to talk about Friday the 13th and uh, the mystery and the history behind that. But we're also doing a salute to Calvin Parker. Um, on October 11th of 1973, 50 years ago uh, yesterday, Calvin Parker and his friend Charles Hickson were abducted uh, by these robotic entities that came out of um, what you would call a UFO. And Calvin, his entire life, he was ridiculed and dragged through the mud, but he was 100% honest. He was subjected to interrogation on all levels of law enforcement, all the way up to the FBI truth serum, hypnotherapy, okay. lie detector tests. And I got to know Calvin. Uh, I considered him a friend. And um, what what he explained to me was um, amazing, horrifying, definitely otherworldly. And he passed um, back in August. So we're going to be talking about that, yeah. plus uh, the the Brigatriska decaphobia, the fear of Friday the 13th. So you can find out about all of that on my website, afterlifefrequency.com. Thank you. Wow. Let's go, Emily. I think we have time to really bring on another one of our fabulous listeners. Okay, awesome. We have Allison from Napa. Allison, you are live. Welcome to the show. Hey, Allison, how can we help you? Welcome. Um, hello, let me get off speakerphone real quick. So we decided my boyfriend's question is better than mine. So we're going to uh, go to him. And if there's time for me, then my turn. Well, wait, wait, I'm not sure we hello. can do that. I'm not sure. Oh, you got to put your boyfriend on. Oh, I got you now. I'm okay. Right okay. How can we so help let you? Me not, let me not waste any of your time. And I had a friend uh, pass about 12 weeks ago. Uh, excuse me. No, about six weeks ago. Um, he was diagnosed with cancer and about six weeks after that passed. Um, mm, sorry, he, to, sorry, sorry for your loss. His, oh, it's terrible. It's terrible. But his wife of 10 years and they have two children texted me what was about six weeks after his passing that she wanted to introduce me to her boyfriend. And... I don't like it. Okay. And right. I have a no that Peter or that that's my situation. Okay. Let me turn you over to Mark because we never know who is going to come through and let's see what Mark yeah. can do to connect you. Now, first off, I'm, I'm very sorry for the passing yeah. of your friend. Um, I lost my best friend um, about five, six years ago. It's probably longer than that. It's just, uh, I, I can't even remember um, I was so numb uh, when it happened. So, so please accept my my deepest uh, condolences. Um, um, there's a male energy coming through now. I don't know if this is your friend Peter yet, but he um, keeps showing me motorcycles. Um, do you like motorcycles? Did he like motorcycles? But I keep getting motorcycles. Can't think of any motorcycle, at least that I know about him. No, what about with you? No, I'm not a motorcycle person. Okay. Is there a male connected to you that really liked motorcycles? My dad. Um, we have, there's some family that are. You're, 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 you're overthinking. You're overthinking. See, when you hyperanalyze and overthink, you, you create blocks. 
because um, your wife okay. said something about somebody um, like motorcycles. So if you're no, 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 and overthinking, then you're going to create a block. Okay. So um, yeah. So who is it that like the motorcycles? So my girlfriend, father, and her brother. All right, let, let's put her on back on the phone. Let's yeah, put her let's back get on her. Phone. Yep. There we go. Yeah, okay, this message, I think. Yeah, this message may be for you. Go ahead, Mark. Yeah, okay. So um, um, I'm getting a guy that like motorcycles. You said your father and your brother, are they planet Earth or in spirit? They are planet Earth. Okay. Um, that's okay. That's okay. Um, I'm getting an, um, another male coming through, older male. And he's with an older female, so they could be grandparent types because they look like they were probably in their 80s when they passed, um, uh, like early 80s. Um, and is somebody connected to you having an issue with their liver? And this could also apply to Peter. I don't know if he had cancer that got into his liver, but they're talking about an issue with the liver. And a lot of times a liver issue means somebody that may also have a drinking problem. Is any there, anything there make sense? Um, yeah, Peter uh, had uh, cancer everywhere, so it was in his liver. And then um, in regards to the older people, my uh, great aunt passed away quite a uh, few years ago, but then her boyfriend just passed a couple weeks ago. Okay, and so I think... Liver, we... uh, Go ahead. I was sorry. Uh, the, the reason I called was my best friend's mother had died from alcoholism and was just uh, found on the 4th. So that's her go. then. That's that's the woman that's come yeah. through. Your best friend's mother, okay, with the liver. All right, that's that's where we're going here. Okay. Um she said that she's free, she's free, she's free of all the chains. Okay. Uh the chains meaning all the depression, all the sadness that was driving her to drinking. And she wants you to let your friend know this. Is there somebody connected to you or your friend with a name like Karen? Could be Sharon. Um, but I'm getting like a Karen or wow, a Sharon. Yeah, I have a friend um, slash employee uh, named Sharon. Okay, great, great. Okay, um, is this a tried and true uh, employee, like um, True Blue? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. so so yeah, they're saying True Blue, True Blue. Now, um, Peter may be coming through because I'm getting a younger male um, stepping in and like you indicated the cancer was everywhere I'll, um, and it really got into his bones because i'm feeling like his bones liquefying um he said that she'll come to her senses she'll come to her senses so wow. even though his wife is like found rebound guy boyfriend he said that she's always been in denial um, she doesn't want to face her fear. She doesn't want to face the pain of his passing. She's looking for some type of a feel good thing. But um, he said okay. she will come to her senses. And the worst thing you can do right now is is criticize her. Just listen to her. OK, Dr. Pat, I, I, this sounds like something you can help with, too. Yeah, I want to just say this. Um, boy, we have enough in our own lives to take care of ourselves. You have to have faith and trust that whatever decision this woman is making, she's on her own path. And so the best thing you could do to take what Mark just said is to allow that to happen. This whole eclipse is about letting go. It is literally about letting go. And especially with Venus, the way it's operating and Virgo, it's all about love, romance and letting go for a lot of people. In your case, the hardest thing to face is when we see somebody like that, our best friends that we loved that are not here anymore and their partners do something we think is selfish. It's not selfish. See, the one thing I know about love is love is not selfish. And so you have to find a way to take whatever. I don't know if you're angry at your friend for not being here anymore. I know that can happen. But you don't want to put your energy into building a resentment about a situation and a person you have no control over. Do you see what I'm saying? That's not going to show any more love for your friend that passed. It's not going to do it. That makes sense to you guys? Um, 
Yes, it does. Yeah, it's a hard message. It's one of the hardest messages I've ever delivered on this show. But I will tell you, it won't serve you and it won't serve the gentleman that was just on the phone. If anything, it may divide you two. That situation can yes, put... And then it would divide him from a relationship with uh, the children too. It, there's no question about it. And please remember this. Your friend is gone. The love is not gone. And the children that are left may need your support. And if there's any anger and resentment there, kids know it. So you have to sometime, my mama used to say to me, and I'm not saying this to your, to your boyfriend, but my mama used to say, girls, you got to put your big girl panties on right now. You got to put that anger behind you. Got to put those big girl panties on right now. You're bigger than that. Bigger than that. You got it? Please work to do it. that. Um, please. Yeah. Is there anything else from my best friend's mother who passed from alcoholism? Well, we're, we're out of time. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. So um, yeah, we'll, we'll be back next week. Yeah. But, but remember what Mark said, that whole conversation got us to the message I just left you with. All of that got you yeah. here. You know, this is her coming through in, in what may not make sense to you to get a message to you and your partner who was just on the phone to say, no, anger and resentment is not a priority. It's not going to bring him back. And it's certainly not going to alter her path. But what it will do is it will drive a stake where there should be love. And I think your friend that I think that person that passed was that kind of person. So please take that message with you, will you? Yes. Okay. Remember to leave with love. That's what your friend would have wanted you to do. Lead with love. Thank you for calling in. Wow, what a great show. Um, yeah. That's, that's a tough message. That's tough to watch that happen. But there are kids involved and the kids need support. Yes, they do. And for everybody out there, when you lose somebody, um, you've got to give yourself time before you jump into a new feel-good relationship. My book, Never Letting Go, goes into that quite a bit. Anyway, um, Dr. Pat and I will be back next week uh, for another call-in show. Uh, this is The Psychic and the Doc. And remember, Friday the 13th just may be your lucky day. And Saturday the 14th, Dr. Pat, is going to be... Big, big, big. Thank you all. Oh, one last thing for those of you that like the caller. This is a day to let go. There are rituals that you can do. As a matter of fact, Jessica and I, we're going to have a rant and rave, and we're going to take a bunch of things and break them on that day. Of course, we'll clean up our mess, but it is the day to really break free of anything that stops you. Anger and resentment are the worst offenders. Thank you all. Thanks, Mark. See you tomorrow night. See you, everybody. Have a great show. Have a great day. Hey, everybody, thank you for tuning in to The Psychic in the Dark with Mark Anthony and me, Dr. Pat Basile, right here on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Hey, look, come back next week so we can explore with you more of life's many challenges and learn from fascinating guests. And you know what? Even Mark and me. We'll connect you and discover insights from people in this life and from the afterlife extraordinary problems yeah they do they require extraordinary solutions but step into the world of possibilities with us on the psychic and the doc that's every thursday 4 p.m pacific time 7 p.m eastern time right here on transformationtalkradio.com that's transformationtalkradio.com and don't forget we're also live face to face on facebook.com transformation talk radio <laughs>